just finished rearranging my student seats. I have sanitized everything with our special spray that we have. Um, so it's just a little, I think this was free. This was one of the very first games I ever got when I started teaching, probably like my third or fourth year. And I just put the letters on the things and they just have to match that way. So, and that may actually be too complicated for that little baby. because. For those of you that are new here, my name is Michelle Crisofoli. I am a first grade teacher of 17 years in Central Florida, and I am so excited that you are joining me today. Today's video is all about setting up centers in our new times. Um, my ideas, my thoughts, how I'm going to organize my classroom. I would thought I would just kind of break it down for you, show you what I'm thinking, show you how I organized it and what I'm doing in each thing, although they're not fully set up yet, hopefully by the end of this weekend. I will have all of my center games put together, ready to go, and everything organized. So I thought I'd show you what I'm doing, how I'm setting everything up, and how I'm going to get ready to get my kids launched into center. So here we go. Guys, okay, so this is how I do my center rotations. Normally I have a pocket chart that hangs on my wall that has two students on a little shark, and then next to the two students is the centers that they go to for the day. Um, obviously I can't put students together. I don't want to take up the wall space um, for the pocket chart this year, so I thought I would try this. This was from Keeping Up with Mrs. Harris. I just kind of used her thought process and idea um, behind it, but she posted something on her Facebook page about her center rotations, and I saw it, and I thought that's a great idea. Um, I will insert a clip of me making this right here. To show you how I created the center rotation slide, um, I'm just in my Google Drive. I'm going to go to New, Google Slides. Give it a second to come up. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here to the themes. I'm going to X out of that. I don't need that. And I'm going to get rid of these boxes. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the background. I go to Google image search and I just like a nice calm ocean blue background on my side, similar to what I did for my morning message. Um, let's go with this one. I just click on it and then click insert. And there it is. Most of it's going to be covered anyway. I just like the calming color. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start with my text box on the top. But for my text box to stand out, I'm going to put a shape in first. So I'm going to go to Shapes. And I'm just going to click on Square. And I'm just going to drag that over. And I want to change that color a little bit. I want it a little bit lighter. I don't want it white, but I want it a little bit lighter than that. I don't think that was going to fit much. I think that's white. I don't want it white. So let's go back to custom and let's do a little bit of transparency and let's go with be about right there. That's better. And then I can put the text box on top of that and it'll stand out. So now I go to text box. And I'm going to draw my text box. I'm going to type in centers. Oh, obviously, I want to change that font and I make it bigger. So I'm going to come over to my fonts. I like permanent marker. Um, Lobster and Righteous, those are my like, go to fonts on my slides. So I'm going to do permanent marker and I'm going to make it quite big. I'm going to go up to 60. Actually, I don't like that font. Let's go with something a little bit thinner. Let's do that one. Still needs to be a little bit bigger, so let's go to 72. And I'm going to just kind of center it. There we go. Um, and then I wanted an image for over here, so I'm going to come over to Insert Image, Search the Web, and I think I just picked that one. Just a 
random shark. I think I was just looking for like a fun one, but the only fun one that came up was that one. So I don't even remember the one I chose. There's so many choices. Let's see. Um, let's just go with that one. Insert. Okay, so now I need to resize and rotate. You could put anything you want to in there. I just wanted a shark. So there's my top. Now I want to get my table in. This is where the real magic happens, right? So I'm going to go, go to insert. And I'm going to come down to table. Since I have essentially five groups and two center rotations, I need a table that is six so that I have the extra box and three. So six by three. And I'm going to resize. Now so I want this table to have a white background, so I'm going to highlight the table. I'm going to come over to white and fill it in. And then I want to adjust this to make that shorter and make my table a little bit bigger. So this is going to be where I put my groups, and this is going to be where I put my rotation. So rotation one will be here, rotation two, and then my colored groups will go across the top. So I'm going to highlight those top boxes. I'm going to come up here to font, and I'm just going to choose a simple font. You could even just color the boxes so they know um, which group. You could do that. Um, I'm going to choose 30, and I'm just going to go in and do red, oops, red group, green, yellow, blue, and pink. And then I'm going to go back and highlight that and fix the centering of the font. Can you all hear my kids in the background? They can't be quiet for five minutes. And then I'm going to do the same thing down the sides. Comic Sans, and then align it, and I'm going to align it to the middle and center it. And this is rotation one, rotation two. Highlight those and make that bigger so that it looks a little bit better. Okay, obviously that's too big, so let's go back down and make sure that, that works. Now, in this box is where I put my timer, so let me show you that real quick. So I just went to Google and I typed in it's digital class timers. I can't remember the actual website. Oops, not times, timers. I think it's this one. Online dash stopwatch. Yep. And I just clicked on the countdown one. And then <clears throat> I took a screenshot of it. I think I use this one. So 15 minutes. Yep. And then I just took a screenshot. And so if you're on a Mac, that's just not going to work. Um, on a desktop or on another computer, Windows, anything like that, it's just the snipping tool. So I just do shift command four and I take a screenshot. And then go back, and I'm going to insert that image I just took. There we go. And resize it. Put it right there. And then you just link that. I did. I just linked that, so I went back to it, copied the link, and then insert link, and then paste the link in. Now you have a link there so that when you pull it up, all you have to do is click on it and it will bring up your timer, and you can use that to help remind yourself. Or if you just have a regular class timer, you could do that. 
but I liked having that on there. So now it's just a matter of what you want to fill in for your centers. I wanted my kids to have an iPad time because that was an easy um, choice for me. So I just typed in iPad. I always type in transparent background. And that one, yes sir. Crop that because I don't need the phone. Okay, so drag it where you want it. Drop it there. And then you might want it in another spot. So I just control C, copied it, and I did it there. Um, if you had um, specific center bins that you were passing out, you could put those in there. You could take a picture and put those specific center bins in. Um, my kids are going to do various things on the iPad. I showed you the one for my classroom. So now you just insert the pictures that make sense for your classroom. There are mine again. And as I was loading their bins today, I realized I wanted them to do their bins one more time than just this. So I think I will probably take away the um, epic one time because they can do epic on their iPad time. Um, so I, I might put this one in instead of doing epic twice. Like that. Um, and then I might just flip it. Flip this one and flip epic so that because what's going to happen is when I do, so I, let's say this was Tuesday. So uh, Wednesday, they would, I would move these one. So like this one would come up to the first, this one would go down, this one would go up. So I'm just going to move the pictures around. So if I duplicate this slide, and I want this one to be, let's say this is Monday, for example, and this is Tuesday. So then I'm just going to move, I'm going to move these pictures off, and I'm going to move everything up a step. And when I get my groupings, um, for my guided reading, then I will include those in here and we'll probably have like rotation three. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work, but, but that's just all I did. So I hope that was helpful and, you know, let me know what else you want to see. Okay. So basically my students are going to be separated by their um, group color, their guided reading color. Um, this alleviates, and eventually I can put in, you know, like teacher, um, but I don't know that schedule just yet. I'm still testing my students. It's taking so long, but I kind of have an idea of who's going to be with what. So um, next week they will learn their color group um, and that just coordinates to those bins right there. So if you have pattern bins or whatever, then you could do something like that. Um, so I thought that this was about the easiest way to organize them. Oops. So on rotation one, my green group will go and get their, will just get their iPads out and they can play any game on their iPad. And then when it's rotation two time, they will go to their book bin or their, their book bins, which aren't going to have books in them. They're going to have center games along with books from the library. So it's going to be kind of a combination. So it'll be like, they can read some, they can look at their books um, and they can also do games that I put in there. Um, so, and then this group, would do their games on their digital games that I put on our on our online platform and then their rotation would be already this group's gonna go into epic and then they'll go onto their iPad I ready um, center games on their iPad and then book bins and epic so that was my thought process behind it if you have any more ideas of things I can do where I don't rotate them around the room my plan is, because they're getting a lot of iPad time and I don't want them to have that much iPad time, I will pull one student, 
hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. So I don't want them to have all that iPad time. So I will pull a student from here, a student from over here, and I will send them to different places in the room. Like my writing center, I can put one student in the writing center um, at a time. And so over the course of the week, five students will get to go to writing center. I will not put a student back there um, like back to back. So I won't have a student go sit over there and then send another student right after. So it'll just be one. Um, we'll go there. I will have one student doing um, activities in the word work area where they can sit on the carpet in front of the door. They're far enough from everybody. Um, so if you can see that, they can sit over there and they're far enough from everybody that they're at least six feet, um, probably more than that if I actually measured. Um, and they can sit in the, over there and do word work activities from those bins. Um, and, but that's really the only two places that I can see putting kids right now because I have students that are sitting on the carpet already. Um, so I don't want to put, I don't want to put anybody up here. Normally I would let my kids read big books up there, but because I've got kids that are sitting on the carpet, I don't feel comfortable taking that chance. Um, I just, I know these kids, they are, um, they want to be near each other. It's, it's a bit, bit of a battle. Um, right now so but I know that they they will be far enough over there to sit in front of the door and then my writing center let me go over there to it my writing center I can have one student sitting here I'm gonna put writing paper on my table fun pencils pens markers that sort of thing and then I'm gonna set up my writing center so I will show you that in just a minute but that was my my plan my thought process was to get um, that rotation set up and then these are their bins that they're using i've started loading stuff in their bins so for example they have a couple of decodable books i'm going to go get some decodable books for some of my higher readers and put them in there so they have some books i'm going to let them shop next week and pick out two books from our library that they get to keep all week only two to start us out and then they'll have some bags of games i do have some babies that are i don't know why my hand keeps getting in front of that I do have some babies that are um, still learning their letters and sounds. So I'm gonna have to go back to my kindergarten stuff and pull out some of that, some of those games. So that's gonna take me a bit. That's um, one thing I need to work on this weekend because I don't have those available and ready anymore. I haven't used them um, in so long. So I don't even know where they're at. But I'm gonna put their stuff in their bins. And so this way it can be uh, individualized and they can get their bin. So if on Monday, if um, if I pop this up, then at the start of center time, if they know that they're gonna need their bins for that day, they will go get their bin. And what I might end up doing is some of these that are like this one and this one, I might put the bins there as well. Um, or I may replace Epic with the bin. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I may replace one Epic with the bin. I don't know. Um, but well, it'll take some time to figure it out. This right here is the timer. So when I click on this, it'll bring up the clock timer and it's set for 15 minutes. So I just put a link in. I just took a picture of it, put a link in, and then I will go in and set it for 15 minutes. And the kids know when the timer goes off, they go to rotation two or they pull up rotation two. So I hope that makes sense for there. Um, and then let me put you down and I'm going to show you the actual centers and how I got to where I was with my groupings. Okay, so obviously this week I've done some um, reading level testing. I've gotten reading levels for most of my students. Um, I put, and I'll show you how I set up for guided reading in another video, but I put all of their names on here. Um, in my guided reading folder and put them in their groups based off of their reading level. And this is my little quick chart that I use. I just put their names down the side. I put our reading levels. I put the goals for each nine weeks across the top. And then I put, so like beginning of the year is going to be pink. And so I just color it in where they're at beginning of the year. And then this helps me quick group them. Um, my little babies here that are, that I've got the little brackets around. The bracket by itself means they didn't know any letters at all. 
uh, and they couldn't read an A because I didn't test them <laughs> because they didn't know anything. Um, the brackets with the little star means they know their letters, but they weren't strong enough to read a level A. So they'll be doing some um, phonemic and phonological awareness activities to help get them ready to start reading. And then these babies will be doing um, letters. And then, I've got, of course, I've got my groups. Um, so that gives me a, a starting point. So that's how I split up my colors. Um, I set up for guided reading later. Um, but I got my reading levels. Um, and so I'm going to put their names on little cards on our buckets. And then that green group corresponds to the chart that I just showed you. So green group would start off with... Uh, playing on their iPad and then they would do those bins. So what I did for those bins was I just went through my centers. I've got my center tub down here. I'm still working on pulling stuff out. Um, I'm going to go through and if this is an activity that I feel like one of my students can do, then I would put this in their tub. Now, are they going to know how to do these? No. Next week it's going to be a, let me explain all the centers tubs because normally I explain it to the whole class well I'm gonna have to just show them how to for my ones to read the directions and then my other ones um, it will be stuff from like uh, kindergarten smorgasbord that's the same pattern different clip art um, but like I have a little friend who can easily do this she needs to be challenged this would challenge her um, and it's great. So she would get one page. I would just pull one page out of here. She'd get the instructions and the cards and I would put this in her bin. Um, so I'm just going through this bin. This is my literacy bin and my math bin is right there for September. And I'm just pulling out um, games for those bins. Um, my thought process was also, okay, let me start that over. So my thought process was to take these little folders that I got from Amazon to put their names on it and then inside put word work activities for them for the whole week. So put like two or maybe three activities in here that they could do through the whole week and then something different would go over there. Okay friends, so let me put this stuff up that my boys got out. My husband just came and picked up my children so that I could finished showing you everything. Um, I went ahead and filled their boxes. I'm about to show you their boxes and I was gonna show you the writing center. Um, Cause I've got that done and I'm gonna show you their, their little folders, their phonics folders. So they have plenty of activities to do in their bins next week. So let me spin you around. So everything has been sanitized. Every um, chair, student stuff has been moved so it can sit over the weekend. Let me start over here with Writing Center. So like I said, I will have one student that I will pull and let come per day and then I can clean at the end of the day. So this is our Writing Center. So the choices that they have to start us off, and I'm going to teach them this next week, but this is what they're gonna start with, labeling a picture and writing a list. And they can use these picture cards there is their make a list paper. There is their special writing supplies. That's why I can only let one student come because I still want them to be able to use all the fun things, but I'm gonna have to sanitize that stuff every day. Um, and then there's their label stuff. So that is our writing center. Their real life <laughs> hot mess express. There are their bins. So that's something that they can rotate to. Um, will not rotate to, they will get their bin and if, if it's their day to have their bin and they will have also two library books in there along with their games or library books, I guess our library books. Um, they have their iPads that they keep with them. So they'll do several things on their iPads and then one more activity will be in here and it's going to be magnetic letters with the page that I showed you earlier. So there's their centers. Um, when I set up for groups, and I still haven't put these in their bins because I'm in the process of copying all of their papers for this, and rather than me trying to stuff them individually, I'm going to give this to them, explain what these are, and then give them the papers to stuff in it. 
because otherwise I, I will be here all night. So that's also going in there. Um, and then, like I showed you earlier, I've got their, let me spin you back around. Okay, so like I showed you earlier, I've got their center rotation. That'll be the first day of centers. We won't start centers on Tuesday officially. Um, I will be teaching them all about each center. I'm going to go with it just like I always have, except instead of sending them off to their spot, I'm just going to explain to them the different things that they have. Oh, I just realized I needed to spray my chairs and my desks up there. Let me do that real fast. So, for example, when I'm talking to them about Epic and I have to show them on their iPads where to go for Epic. Let me spread these out so they can get sprayed. Um, sorry. I just don't want to forget to spray these things. There we go. Um, I will teach them how to do Epic and then they will have some time on Tuesday to do Epic. They already know how to do their iReady. Um, and they already know how to work on their iPads. So the things I'm going to have to train them on next week is going to be all of those different center games. Most of my center games stay the same throughout the year. The clip art changes and the skill gets a little bit more difficult. But the actual activity just progresses. It stays the same, but it just progresses. So the um, only other thing I have to do this weekend is pull more letter games, letter ID games. Because I have three kids for sure that only know like two or three letters. Um, and I want to pull plenty of stuff because it looks like we will have help come into our classroom, pull some students and take them into another classroom to work on some things. So I want to make sure I load up this stuff this weekend. It's so much to do and I feel like I could sleep here and I still wouldn't get it all done. Um, but that's that. That's centers. I hope that this was helpful for you. It certainly helped me think things out um, to have it planned this way. I will link all of the different centers that I have bought over the years down below in the description so you can check them out. Next week, I will show you some more of the centers, like what they're doing. Um, I'll give you some examples. My plan, hopefully next week, is to record guided reading setup and a guided reading plan with me video. It'll be two separate videos, otherwise it would take forever. But I wanted to film those for you next week instead of doing um, a vlog. If you guys like the vlogs, please leave me a comment and let me know. Um, I just know that I want my channel to be as helpful as possible. Um, so, I just didn't feel like the vlogs were very much help. Me talking to the camera for an hour, I didn't feel like that was very much help. Um, I would rather do like a specific topic and give you ideas. So, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's so short compared to all my other videos. I think it's probably gonna be like 20 minutes or less. So I hope it was helpful. Please leave me a comment below um, and let me know what else you'd like to see. And with that being said, I'm going to head home and I'm going to have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys next week. Happy Labor Day. I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe and I'll see you next week. Bye.